Hello, Justin with the Atlanta Brick Co. I am joined with Chris and John, and these guys are the minifig masters. And so I have gathered them today to talk about CMFs, the Collectible Minifigure Series. We're going to start from number one, go all the way through, give you details, give you our little, or their little, I'm just going to sit back and bask in your knowledge, really, bathe, bathe in your pool of intelligence. That's what I'm going to do. You yeah. can input every so often. Every once wish. in a while, I'll make a dumb joke or and something. We're only going with the numbered series figures. Mm -hmm. We're not doing any of the license, uh, the licensed ones. Nope. And we're not doing the movie one, the Lego movie ones. So nothing from Ninjago, Ninjago, Harry Potter, The Simpsons, The Simpsons. We're not, nothing. We're not doing those. Just the Lego non-licensed. E even the movie is considered a license yeah. because there were licensed figures in it. Okay. So we're gonna start with number one. So first of all. These came out in 2010. They were $2.99. I believe so, yeah. Right, when they first came out. Much cheaper than they are now. <laughs> and I remember seeing these in Toys R Us and just being blown away. I mean, what a genius thing on Lego's part. The minifigs are such a huge draw to then make their own in a blind bag. Now, what's your opinion? on the whole blind bag, you have to search for it or you're either surprised by it. What's your opinion on that? I personally enjoy them just because you can, it's a cheap way to get a minifigure uh, that you may or may not like. Sure, there might be some that you don't like in certain series, but you can always army build or anything like that with them, which is what I do. That's a great point. And I think a lot of people do that. This is the cheapest way to get super exclusive minifigures. But I mean the point that you don't know what you're buying. What's your opinion on that? That is actually nice, because I personally like it, because it's a sense of surprise, which you don't get in like a set. Because with a set, you know exactly what you're getting every single time. So as an adult collector, you actually like the surprise part of it. Yes, okay. but I don't get it because I refuse to be surprised now. I just it. <laughs> so John is considered our minifigure feeler. So he is the best one in the store at feeling up minifigures. Yes. To, de to determine who's in the pack. Yes. So we sell a lot of mystery packs, and people will be like, oh, I want this figure. John will just pick one up, and there it is right there. I thought I was good at it. Mm -hmm. And and I, I had like a 90, 95% success rate. I was very rarely wrong. Mm -hmm. But it took me a while. I see this guy, he basically goes, and he knows. It's ridiculous yeah. how fast he is. It's mostly due to memorization of the figures and knowing what they have in each one. Knowing you, what to feel for. Yeah. yeah. If you know a specific item that only comes with them in the one series, then you know exactly what to feel for every single time. And it's very easy to find them that way. It's amazing how quick you are at it. Back to you, Chris. What is your opinion on the blind bag? The the You don't know what you're going to get. I love it. It's like baseball cards. When you buy a pack of baseball cards, you don't know what you're going to get. Or when I was a kid, we used to buy the garbage pail kids cards. Mm -hmm. and, and you never knew which ones you got. And I love it in our store because people bring us all these extra CMF figures that they, that they didn't want. Okay. It's a good way for us to get more figures and a good way for them to get store credit and get rid of figures they didn't want. And trade for what they do want. I know a lot of adult fans, they want to know what they're buying. Like uh, Megan Constructs, their license lines are all window box. You know mm -hmm. exactly what you're getting. The other thing the collectible minifigure series used to do, and correct me if I'm wrong, if they still do, I, I thought they don't do that anymore, but they artificially made some characters more rare? Yes. In the um, beginning. And some of them were, we'll get to Mr. Gold, but some of them were like three to five was the ratio. In a box, you'd get five of this guy and three, and sometimes even two yeah. of somebody in a box. What's your opinion on that? I mean, that makes them more collectible, rare, uh, etc. But I'm honestly good with either. I think it's nice that they do put the same amount in, because then that gives everyone an equal opportunity to get them. And it allows for certain figures, like if you want doubles or multiples of them, to get more when you find one box than if, per se, the figure when it was two in a box. You would only be able to get two mm -hmm. if you found a box at the store. Unless some of them disappeared because someone bought some. So it allows you to get more of a certain figure if you want it. But at the same time, most of the figures are pretty average price together now because mm -hmm. um, in the older series when it was two to five ratio the ones with two are way more expensive and a lot more collectible a lot of people would buy it from secondhand sellers on like bricklink or something i think both are nice in their own ways i honestly prefer the three 
three ratio or yeah. four to three ratio more. And sometimes to me, it wouldn't make sense. Like, why did they pick this guy to be the rare, rare one? It yeah. didn't. It, I, I didn't always agree. It's like that one's not that cool. This like, one is better. It's like they put all the minifigures out and then put a chicken down, whichever one it picked first, yeah. and the one with two. And so forth. <laughs> That's how Lego makes a lot of business decisions. I hear they just put a chicken on a table. What's your opinion? I mean, I know. I guess as a reseller, we like that because then some figures are more rare. I, I honestly, I like it both ways. Mm -hmm. I, they've changed it up a lot over the years, mm -hmm. and I, I like it every way you could imagine. I like it when they put a chase figure in there. Mm -hmm. I like it when they make them all equally hard to find or easy to find, and then I like it when they do the two or three to five ratio mm -hmm. i mean it's it, it, it's fun either way i do think that they should make more of the what they know is going to be popular the roman soldiers any mm -hmm. party builder soldiers knights vikings uh those are obviously going to be more popular so they should make more of those figures and then less of some of the really lame figures that just are not that good the skydiver for instance from series 10 10 was uh, he's okay but he's just i mean how many skydivers do you yeah. need it seems like we have like a hundred skydivers yeah. in one of the roman soldiers from series yes 10, you know yeah. i think the uh skydiver was one with five in the box as well because with yeah. series 10 it was still the random ratios not equal ratios so they, they can just... make the less popular figures the chase figures so that the they become more popular. Mm, yeah. You know, that would be a way to do it. Either way, it's it's good, it's fun, and it's it always gives you something to look for. I I don't like it when they make that one chase figure, like Graves from the Harry Potter series, mm -hmm. always in the same spot in the box. So you open up a brand new box and there he is, third from the back, left, and that's kind of defeats the purpose of it. Yeah. yeah it but like only that, so. police officer as well from series eighteen. The police officer. Yeah. But only one, like yeah. super in the know people even know that. The people who know like that figure is in this part in the box, they've done their research or they've already bought a box already, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Or they went online and somehow found someone who shared that information. So those people are really super fans anyway. But you're mm -hmm. right. They just come in and cherry pick the one. And they don't have to sit there and feel it. Because some retailers like Target put it on end caps. Mm -hmm. And they mix them up. And you said the best way to get boxes is go to places like Five and Below. Yeah, Five Below or like a smaller retail Walmart store. Walmart also that would sell them. So Walmart is fine and Target's fine, but it's hard to get customer service to go yeah. in the back and get you a mm -hmm. sealed box. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas at Five Below, they just walk. There's two people yeah. in the store. One of them walks in the back. They get a box if they have it, and they bring it out to you. Whereas it's just harder to get service at Walmart or Target. So. Um, um, so those are the best places to get sealed boxes. I would say more moms than anything are good at feeling up these figures. Okay. And moms out there, you know exactly what I'm talking yeah. about because uh, your uh, six-year-old isn't going to be as good because they don't have the dexterity mm -hmm. to feel that bow. Mm -hmm. And the mom doesn't want to buy 10 to 20 <laughs> packs mm -hmm. trying to get that Indian. You know what I mean? So she's going to get, she's going to feel, you want, which one? Okay. Done. Look at all the money I just saved. Yeah. I just saved 50 bucks. Yeah. There. There it is. And so the moms actually get really good. And your, didn't your mom get really good? My mom's still good at it, yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. we've known John for a long time. 13 mm -hmm. years. 13 years, oh, wow. yeah. That would have put you at Young. seven. Yeah, seven. Seven years old. So you, his mom was getting good at feeling the packs up. Yeah. I remember being in Five and Below one time, and they had Series 11, and you had all of them in your hands in the checkout line as I passed by you, and I was just like, <laughs> well, that's nice. <laughs> we buy them. We used to buy them for retail. We don't anymore, but we I used to buy them for retail before we opened the store, open them all up, and then sell them for uh, whatever their market price was. Okay. Um, they were also a lot cheaper because they were three ninety nine for the longest time, and yeah. then they most recently raised them to four ninety nine. Yeah. I think at... <clears throat> series either I don't remember when it happened but I know I've heard people complain it was they were three bucks for a long time and then they raised them to four and there was hardly any time at all mm -hmm. before they raised it again to five do you guys feel like that price range with the quality you got was because of production cost was it warranted 
or do you think it was simply a business decision? Hey, let's see the threshold. What's what are people willing to pay? I think it was probably something production wise and or resources went up mm -hmm. price wise, so they had to raise the price there. But it's also Lego, and their prices have progressively been getting higher on most everything, and the popularity of has has of them have has gone up considerably so they're like hey we can probably make an extra buck off of this well and a we lot of them are licensed <laughs> as well so yes. it cost them more money too okay so, so just i guess maybe when they saw that the license figures were selling for more it's like hey why not just make them all those yeah make guys. them all the same they're also okay. doing a lot more prints and like molds for them now yes. like for instance they're adding a dolphin in one of them yes like multiple of them now and more than one item that they can hold, sometimes even three or four. Yeah. The, so the flamingo, the dog walker came with two dogs. Yes, two dogs. And, and they have dual molded, molded and a shovel, like. dual molded legs and arms. Yes. Yeah. So printed arms. Printed arms. Mm -hmm. Although one of them might, like the cowboy here, is probably cheaper to make. And the ninja's cheaper to make because they already had the mold for the mask. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have to do anything new for the ninja mm -hmm. except print. Yeah. So he's probably cheaper to make, but then. Uh, the robot yeah the robot's going to be more expensive and it averages out yeah you know so they have to average it out we were talking about the feel oh yes them up, and there are feel guides so as soon as you uh as soon as the figures come out people will post feel guides you know what you're feeling for mm -hmm. in those mm -hmm. series uh, of course you can figure it out yourself but you know, they it makes for good content for posting stuff yeah. on the internet. Mm -hmm. Back in series one, they had barcodes, and they yeah. had two two barcodes on the packs. So one was the retail barcode, and one was the barcode that told you which figure it was. So you could just yeah. look at it and see. Really? So I, there I was a way that, to cheat. Yeah. Yeah, there so, was a oh, way yeah. to cheat if yeah. you knew. Yeah. And oh. they had they have a European barcode, and then they have a. Didn't Amer uh, English barcode, American they barcode. They had, um, what well, with the barcodes? I remember being in Jacksonville, Wyoming, of all places, and they had this huge toy store downstairs at one of the shops, and it had, like, Series 2 through the current one, which I forget what that one was, but uh, he was scanning up Series 2 because I was looking for the Spartan, and he found one that scanned as the Spartan, but it wasn't the Spartan, and one that didn't scan as the Spartan, I felt up and it was the Spartan. Mm -hmm. So it's iffy with it, but... So it was even iffy back then. Yeah. I didn't really. Well, like, that's Lego making a mistake. Yeah. So we, oh. we have uh, opened packs before. I think it is it the Series 13 banana? <clears throat> you mean Series 16 banana? Series 16 banana. Uh, we didn't get the banana. Or was it the hot, Series 13 hot dog? I think guy. it was yeah, the hot dog. It was either the hot dog guy or the banana. And he didn't come with his suit. His, I don't know, let's call it the banana guy. Yeah. He didn't come with his banana suit. I would have been mad. If I bought got the banana guy, which was the best one, yeah. and he didn't have his suit, and then we got another pack that had two, <laughs> two, so I, yeah. two banana it suits. Yeah. Two of random things. That? Yeah. And then uh, series two would come with. <clears throat> I don't know if it was just season two specifically, but it would come with multiple of their accessories, like more than you needed, mm -hmm. like extra items, kind of like what they do now with the new ones. Yeah. Um, but that was probably by accident because the Morocco man would come with like three instead of two. At yeah. one time, they did start giving you extra though. Yes, I think it was I, when I can't they remember. added the new packaging. Oh, okay. And then series two through five had good bump codes on yeah. the back. These little bumps on the back. Mm -hmm. And they still have those bumps, but they're not like they're, they don't mean anything. They're terrible. And they weren't always it's, right, but they were right most of the time. It's a lot easier to feel them up now. Instead. Yeah. So, so now, starting at series, what, eight, nine? It's super blind now. There's no way, there's no secret. You don't go online and believe that, oh, there's barcodes or bump codes. None of that is true. None of that is consistent. Starting around series, what uh, you say? I'd say six. Six. Because I remember yeah, I five. So, yeah. Okay. I, I was reading the bump codes on series five. Series five, they produced more of, I think, than any other series at that there time. There were a lot. Yeah, yeah there were a lot available. I used to buy boxes and boxes of them at Walmart. At uh, one Walmart, I got eight boxes of them for wow. 75 cents each. Wow. Yeah, I was on a business trip, and my coworker was like, I, I said, hey, you mind if we stop in? It was down in Panama City, Florida. I said, it was on the way home in Alabama. And I said, uh, hey, can we stop in this Walmart real quick? I just want to look at something. And he had no idea, you know, that I was in the Lego. This was back when I had a real job. And uh, I said, hey, John, grab that shopping cart over there. And so we both go to the Lego aisle. And uh, after I had seen them already, I was like, 
grab that shopping cart. I filled up two shopping carts with Series 5 boxes, <laughs> sealed boxes. They were all 75 cents each. And uh, he was the like, whole box was seventy five cents. No, no, the oh, the okay. <laughs> and I was, which is the deal? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and there were three. And so, dollars. yeah. Well, I think three or, or four, four hours by, uh, by series five. And uh, so we we have two shopping carts full of series five boxes, and he's just like, "What are we doing, Chris? What are you doing? What's, what's going on here?" <laughs> I have a problem. Okay, <laughs> I have a problem. As far as the amount of figures, I think they've shrunk those over time. Like it's they've gotten bigger and smaller. What do you guys feel is a good amount? Sixteen, the normal one they produce because now they produce twelve. Mm -hmm. Which is fine, which allows for more per box. Is it still 60 a box? I think some people feel that Lego is doing higher quality. Like, they're really yes. having to narrow down and pick the best ones. Now they're that going they're down. doing 12, they can probably... I mean, they're still making the amount of figures the same. But they, I think they could lower the price again. But okay. I, I don't have an opinion on the how many different mm -hmm. figures they make in a series, uh, except that they should keep it consistent. Uh, my opinion is they make too many suit figures. I mean, they are obviously popular. Yeah. Uh, the, and they're wonderful. Don't get me wrong. The hot dog guy, the banana guy. It was fun when they were putting one in every other series. Now there's two or three. But now they're making entire series of <laughs> yeah. suit figures. <laughs> yeah. And it series just kind of <laughs> waters down the, you know... The collectability of it. Collectability of it. Okay. Yeah. I used to collect yeah. all the costume guys, like, since they were more rare and I enjoyed them mm -hmm. more. Um, but now they just make anything and everything in costume. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, the pizza guy. No offense to the pizza guy, but, like, I, I don't really see him as a costume guy, per se. He's good for marketing if you have a pizza business. Yeah. But there's not that many pizza Use businesses in the Lego universe. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And you mentioned the one that's all costume. I think it was the anniversary 18, series. Yeah. 18, mm -hmm. that was, it was a party was the yeah, theme. Because yeah. there was, like, the gift girl. And anyway, we'll, we'll get to them. But... What do you guys feel about having a blind bag series that's completely themed? So the only two I can think of like, was the Halloween one and the party. Yeah. I think it's pretty cool. The Halloween one was really nice. Yeah. It gave you some very unique figs, like the gargoyle, for instance, which is one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. um, I think they should do more of them. Uh, in their specific timing, though. Like, they released mm -hmm. the Halloween one in and October. Yes. Series 11 sense. was had a lot of Christmas in it. It had, like... The Yeti, the Elf, yeah, the Hag, Gingerbread Guy. Yeah, Gingerbread Guy. Yeah. I wouldn't consider that like a complete theme, but more or the less snow, like what they wanted to do. Snowboarder. Mm. So it obviously yeah. came out around winter time. So it's nice when they throw in something that has to do with okay. that time of year. You know, I like spooky stuff. So that Halloween mm. one like blew my mind. It was. It's the only series I completed. I have every single one and multiples of some. Are you yeah. guys ready to dive in? Yeah. Why not? So this is series one we have sitting in front of us. I know generally the three things that cause the price to go up is the age, the artificial scarcity that Lego did initially, and then the popularity of it. Mm -hmm. So this sitting in front of us is the most expensive in general series because it is series one, 2010. Any standout figures for you guys? Um, definitely the clown. Even though they've made a lot of clowns lately, it was like the first clown with like the bugle piece. I never got him because I never found him when I was a kid. And then when I started working here, his price was like 30 bucks and I was a kid with no money. So I was like, I guess I'm never going to get him. <laughs> he was definitely my favorite as a kid. Um, but now that I look back on it, definitely like Mexican wrestler, um, mm -hmm. is one of my favorites. But I'm still probably not going to get him just because he's a bit more expensive. But I'll, I'll get him one day. This nurse is... Fifty dollars? Can you explain? Mm -hmm. She's just well. They've not made a lot of nurses mm -hmm. now. With all the hospital sets, you can make a better nurse. Mm -hmm. But for the mm -hmm. longest time, people like to buy their occupations, and there's a lot uh, of nurses out there. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted a nurse, as far as occupations go, there's very few cavemen out there. <laughs> um, Maybe geez. that's why he's so much cheaper than all the others. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if you want to buy an occupation, you're like, hey. I really I saw this nurse online and she's fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. Is there a better way to get that nurse? And so we can make custom nurses now, you know, okay. because you do have more nurse parts. Does she have an exclusive anything? She does have a fun detail. Um, on her uh, little clipboard, the name on it is an ode to the person who designed the figure. So that's a little detail, and they actually add that in a lot throughout the, all the series with the names. I love how the they items. they use the Lego branded emblem. 
mm -hmm. on it. So it does fit into your city. Mm -hmm. And they do that a lot with some of the other figures. And she does, I assume this clipboard print, this it's tile print is exclusive. Definitely to her. exclusive, yeah. yeah. What are your guys' opinions on keeping the exclusivity of these? I like it. I mean, that's what makes them collectible. If, they, if they're not exclusive, they're not collectible. Mm -hmm. And what was funnier about that nurse is her torso. They they put a lot of these parts. They'll make them extras and put them in the Build-A-Figs at mm -hmm. the Lego yeah. stores. And her torso was one of those things they put in there. And we've even seen it in there recently. So that uh, her torso is not that expensive, even though it was exclusive to her. But the clipboard, her uh, head... Are the two big things mm -hmm. about her? Actually, this series had a lot of things like that. Like this caveman. That was the first time I think the the uh, I don't know, the club the club was made. The club was new for him, but they remade him and the cave woman in different color. It was a promotional item. Yeah, yeah. Little, like I think they did it for the Easter Bunny and the uh, chicken suit guy. Gingerbread man. Gingerbread man. <clears throat> yeah. mm -hmm. And the zombie. You could actually get this guy in a three pack. No. I remember at the Lego store, oh, like a... there was a, they had the zombie, the witch, and well, the ghost. It's actually a zombie with a brown suit. Correct. They palette swapped gray. the tie yes. and the suit. Yes, that's so, why he's so expensive. Yeah, he would be cheaper had it been that same one. Now yes. the witch, as far as I remember, was exactly the same. It was, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was kind of that takes away the exclusivity it's of that mad. witch. Yeah. yeah. Um, but at least they changed the zombie. And if you wanted that zombie. You could still get him. He just wasn't exactly the same. The spaceman's neat because you have that space logo. For the longest time, he was a really special space character. But now they're making yeah. so many space, space yeah. that it's and he's all still special sets. because he's exclusive. But he's that style gun, the style helmet, mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, similar prints with the space logo are all out there now. This series had a bunch of super cool exclusive things like the pom poms and was the skateboard the, new or the, did they have the skateboard, skateboard was definitely not new. Uh, uh, the robot helmet was very yeah. new. Yeah. And uh, this guy, you guys probably know this, but when characters pop up again, that always makes me giggle. You said you like that. Yeah. This guy, the skater, showed up in a Lego book, but yes. as a zombie. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You were standing a little bit too close to this guy. For I the guess that's time. what happened. Because if you feel like that's his story, that's how his life unfolds. Mm -hmm. Aw, poor guy. <laughs> he ends up becoming undead. Fitting one too many times. But he's still thrashing. He's still grinding and popping ollies. He's still there. Stuff. Hey, at least he has the skate park by that's himself. Right. All to himself every day. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Return of the Ninja was pretty cool. Okay. To have it classic was okay. ninja. It, it was it definitely was okay. one of the. I mean, the original old school ninjas are pretty common. So yeah. easy to find. I mean, but if we think about like when these were made, like the old school ninjas were made back in the nineties, eighties. Yeah, so. and it was right, probably right before Ninja, like Ninjago. These were two thousand ten. Ninjago yes. came out two thousand ten, mm. so it was different just because the coal had like mm -hmm. a certain print on his torso. So it was different completely, um, just because of the torso. But for I the really, most part, he was. I kinda, like the magician's wand because yeah. it's pretty neat printed wand exclusive mm -hmm. to him. But was it dual molded or was it just The print? figure himself is just not print. that, you know, not that fun or not that special. Mm -hmm. yeah. They did make a three length bar, which they use for most of the figures blasters in the series for some reason. Probably because of the size for the packaging. Yeah. But was that new? Three length bars and translucent are basically solely exclusive to CMFs. Really? Surprisingly. And then like So that's the, not the lightsaber? Length? No, it's a three length. Lightsabers are four length. Oh, yeah. so I that's see. a three length bar that's been oh, okay. printed. And then the um, axe handle for the dwarf in series five was a three length. They, they do right. add four length bars Minutes to everything. Now, I though. did not know that. I did not realize that. For series John, two. And definitely and these, as a standout figure. For these, me. That series one came and went so fast. Yeah. Really? So that was hard to get. And they, I there I were very limited amounts of them made. I'm I don't sure. think people realized that they were only going to make them. You know, and sell them for three months, get rid of them, and then come out with a new series. Mm. And they, Lego didn't know how well they were going to do, so they didn't make a whole lot of them. So that's not one that you really found in stores. Because really? when it hit stores, it's kind of like dots. When mm -hmm. dots now, a lot of people don't even know that they're out there still because they're they're in the wrong aisle or something, or they're at Michaels. With these. You didn't even know they were out there, and it was 2010. Lego wasn't as popular. People weren't looking for Lego. If you you just pass right over it in the Lego aisle, but by the time you realize, hey, how cool these things are, 
they're retired and gone already. Wow. They only had them out for three and months. And they had the second series. Mm-hmm. You said this one followed it pretty quickly. Oh, yeah. Again, a good mix. They're stretching themselves even farther, I think, with city people, specific occupations, and then just wild things like this disco guy. Yeah. Um, we have... Oh, man. Afro man. And they have a spark. I think these are still high in price because they always have been high in price mm-hmm. because they've been so unique. But they've they're coming out with all this stuff in other sets. You yeah. know, the this micro fit that that was the first time mic, it was used, yeah. you know, statuette really? that we the saw. The trophy I piece. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. First um, time the uh, Pharaoh's staff. Probably was the used. first microphone. I think this was also the first time that this new spear mold was mm. used as well. Definitely first time for skis and the ski poles. Now they're they're coming out with this all the stuff. The microphones are easy to get. The stat the statuettes are everywhere. The staff is easy to get now too. Mm. Yeah. It's just not as special. Surprisingly, anymore. I still think that the spear is only exclusive to this figure. In, in black. That color. In black, well, it's yeah. actually like the the pearl dark gray. Oh, okay. It's not actually a black. Oh, okay. If that matters, probably not. It does. It matters to us. Accuracy matters. And we do have, so we have all of these figures online for sale, and we have multiples of every figure. Uh, we don't always update our website, so we might have more in stock mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. the store. But I don't know if you noticed, we have all of the Series 1, except the Crash Test Dummy, crash test dummy uh, which is awesome. In fact, he may be the most popular, because it seems like we're always out of him. Either okay. that or Never get rare. many in, or he was yeah. just more rare in the series per the mm-hmm. two five ratio kind of thing. However, with Series 2, we usually have the whole s- series in stock. I'm sure that they made more Series 2 figures than they did Series 1 as far as production levels go. People I know love collecting these exclusive prints on the surfboards and the skateboards. Thankfully, they do change up the print on the surfboard very, very, very often. What's your guys' opinion on them redoing more or less the same character over and over again. They do do gender um, swaps, but like this Roman soldier, they've done uh, a uh, version uh, of uh, him. Spartan. Spartan, sorry, Spartan. Oh, he is a Don't Spartan. Don't disrespect my boy. He is a Spartan. Uh, like they've done a Greek and a Roman soldier. They've done two um, different Roman soldiers. Um, they've, they've done a couple done gladiators the, too. Yeah, they've done three or two gladiators. Mm-hmm. They, two. So as far as your question goes, they can't do enough. Spartans no. or anything that's an army donor, were... they can't make enough of them. I mean, okay. It's nice you got they got to change them a little bit to make them different. Yeah. What about things like the surfer? They've made a female version. What if they came out with the same thing but they different made... hair and a Hawaiian shirt? Or what's your opinion on them kind of redoing the same thing? That's fine. It adds so most people since most people do <laughs> Lego cities. Um, if they have a beach scape, that gives them multiple mm-hmm. surfers that they can have riding waves on the beach, etc. And they're different, solely different, because Lego doesn't do, like, for city at least, or at least they didn't used to. They used to do, like, very simple surfer figs kind mm-hmm. of thing. But this just presented the opportunity to get more highly detailed ones, detailed surfboards, and other stuff. And then for other figures, that's perfectly fine, because army builders exist. Which example for the Spartan? Yeah. A lot of people bought him up fast. He was definitely the most popular of the series. That's why he's so expensive now. He's thirty dollars now. I know that's a critique. As the series has gone on, they, people complain that it's they're making the same thing over and over mm-hmm. again. But your opinions are as long as there's a variety, as long as there's something different, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Give me, give me all your surfers. And Lego knows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they put more research and thought into this stuff, I think, than we give them credit for, mm-hmm. and yeah. than anybody else gives them credit for. So that's one thing I've come to realize is don't second guess what Lego. Don't doing. second guess Lego. They've thought ten steps ahead of you. Moving on to series three. Now this was the Elf. I'm not 100 percent sure the year this came out, but I'm guessing it the was other one? 2011. The other one doesn't matter. The Elf's on this one. <laughs> That elf yeah, is very, this one very has special. the greatest one of all time, the sumo wrestler. He has a copper-colored trophy. Yes. That's pretty cool. A recoloring of the uh, one from Series 2 with the karate master. Yes. I love I that rapper. That, that rapper is just... He's got a... The uh, gold teeth and everything. It's hilarious. Minifigure head on his hat. I mean, this yeah. just... And then this one box. I think this was the first series with that new hat mold, too. Um, mm-hmm. With the more detailed one, more intricate. Because uh, mm-hmm. it came on the baseball player and the rapper. And I remember seeing those hats and, like, I need one of those. But then again, I was like... 11 at the time, so I just wanted the coolest thing possible. I'm surprised they haven't done more with the rapper, like, mm-hmm. given mm-hmm. him a, a backstory or more of a series. 
He's a really cool character. Some of these characters do appear in other LEGO license, mm -hmm. like uh, Ninjago. We'll have a lot of these characters just as background characters, or even reoccurring people with a yeah. line or two. Or some from other themes, for instance. We don't have the baseball player out here. Yeah, we didn't. No, we couldn't he, find him. We did not have. What, yeah. what was the name of the team on his clutchers or the clutchers? something like that? Something yeah, and they made a red and blue yeah. baseball team. They made mm -hmm. a red and blue cheerleader as well. Anyhow, back to the elf. Here. The elf. Let's talk about the elf. <laughs> so this was before the Lord of the Rings had come out. I'm guessing it was. Before. It was. The Lord yeah. of the Rings came out. So that was like one of our first really cool looking elves yeah. they made. Because yeah. before that it was the Forest Men or something like that. But so that would have been the first time we got elf ears, right, John? It was. And I yeah. remember specifically because again as a child I wanted the coolest thing possible. Yeah. I remember seeing mm -hmm. that headpiece and I was just like, that's, that's actually really cool. That's pretty awesome. And I mean, he's fifteen. That's not Insane. The funny thing about that is, I think he's always been fifteen. Real? Oh, yeah. because he's an elf. Yeah. Because he's the first elf. Yeah, maybe twelve dollars. But and it's a really awesome shield mm -hmm. he has too. Uh, the monkey has uh, the gorilla suit guy has always been in that twenty dollar to thirty dollar ballpark. He's twenty seven. I, I feel like he was at the 40 gorilla. At one point. No, he wasn't. It was the chicken suit guy that was at forty, and then he went down a little. Was bit. this this first suit figure that we saw? This was yes. Okay. Um, it started the craze. And the then story. they didn't make another one until Series 5. And again, continuing the idea of there's always a space person. There's always some kind of monster. There's We got the mummy. We got the vampire in the last people. one. We got the zombie in the one before that. There's there's a good guy and bad guy, space. Like with the uh, the one from Series 1, how it had the classic space logo on This one has the uh, Black Tron logo on his torso. That's awesome. Um, which they actually do a few times in the upcoming series. Beautiful three-length bar. Same with this one. A Purple, trans purple three length bar, which still makes no sense to me why they do it. Because they're Lego. And like they, they, can do whatever they, they seem want. to have stopped doing that where they put a, a holiday a monster in them. A, a too scary. I sand. guess because they had their own series and maybe they ran through them all. <laughs> yeah, maybe they thought they were maybe. Be too many. Because there's another surfer. Is this our first gender swap? I think so. To the female surfer, to the male surfer. Yeah. So obviously they knew what was selling well. This one has three monsters. It has the Frankenstein, the werewolf, I love that wolf man, and the mad scientist. This one had some real highlights, though, with, like, the uh, hockey player. The Frankenstein mm -hmm. was big back then. He was very popular. And then the hazmat suit guy was... Yes. The hazmat suit guy is still just number one of the top selling... Yes. Figures twenty four ninety nine seems to be a yeah. lower on the lower end of the yeah price for him. Check their prices. I love the <laughs> the print on the uh, geisha her hair. I think this was probably one of the first times they did a print on the hair for the series. Oh, the CMF series. Mm -hmm. Oh no, the uh, the uh, Hawaiian girl from series three okay. had a mm -hmm. little flower. flower on her head. It's neat with Frankenstein too. They've done different versions of mm -hmm. him. This was where they gave his hair had the the forehead mold, but mm -hmm. it did you know they were different types. Styles. They made it thicker, taller. very thick. Yeah. Another trophy, another sports, so there's been mm -hmm. a sports guy in every one, right? Seems like so even, yes, even that tele telescope was uh that's a unique color. Mm -hmm for him, even though that's a common part. Mm -hmm. I think this was the first time the rapier was made, too. In, oh, okay. And again, uh, a and historical uh, warrior yes. in almost every single one. Yes. And then ice skates were made for the first time, I yeah. think. Because uh, so they used it on two this, figures. This hockey player was really unique. The This was not the first hockey player, though. Yes. They made the uh, hockey set. They made an NHL sets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one had many figures. Rare. Yeah, they they actually had the stickers for all the NHL hockey teams. So this has been one of the banes of my existence. Before we opened a store front, we started selling minifigures at shows, and of course, people come to conventions and they want to buy all. They need. They have lists, and they're trying to check them all off their list. So they know they're going to see us at the convention, and they know that Atlanta Brickco is going to have a very good selection of mm -hmm. the series figures. So they bring their lists. They bring their extras to trade in. Uh, it's something that we did for years and years and years. And the figures' accessories fall off and get lost so mm. easy. And so we just took these out of the case. We brought them down here, and there's just a pile of accessories. But <laughs> yes. there's a, we've got to figure out where they, they go don't like to. Staying. And even in the case, they fall off and fall to the bottom. Here's 
ice skates laying down here. People buy them and they leave them behind. Yeah. That so we've well. tried lots <laughs> of different ways. We've bagged them up. We've tried putting the bag of the figure behind them. We've tried, we bought these little plastic cases for them, which were very expensive. <laughs> they work, but they don't work that great. The mm. cases are too expensive. We've gotten rid of those. So there's still no good solution. <laughs> if somebody has a good solution for us to keep their accessories on them, then let, let us know. know. Um, Why does a gnome have a fishing pole? They all they gnomes have have to eat too. <laughs> they they don't like killing animals. Like, I was wondering if that's a so specific I, lore I, to I, Europe. Or I something. think that's. Um, I'm guessing that you got your garden gnomes, and when they're in the yards, they hold fishing poles quite often. Oh, okay. So they're they're making a lawn garden gnome. Also, oh, okay. yeah. The uh, fun fact: this the hair on the werewolf is actually just a recolor of the elf. Yeah. The elf season. He's pretty popular because that's really as close to military as it gets. Yep. <laughs> they, Other yep. than um, Navy Sailor. They actually did one in a Batman. They had a sailor? Films. Really? No, like no, like an army guy for oh, military oh, boys. Okay. Yeah. So we're on series what is this? Five. Five now. Series five. Man, we're just only moving uh, along here. Fourteen. We? we got a lot to go. <laughs> Another gender swap with the cave girl. And again they made a two pack of the cave boy and cave girl mm -hmm. together. But with different colors. And her mace fell off. This is my favorite. I wish I could afford this guy. I can agree with you. The dinosaur guy and the back is a separate part, which they wouldn't do nowadays. They, nowadays, they'd make it all one piece. Mm -hmm, but, definitely. Like with the uh, shark suit guy and such. Yeah. He is my standout for this series. It seems like they use him as a mascot. A lot of times when you see the CMF mm -hmm. represented, they always have a render of this guy. It was nice because yes. the, usually the better guys are were, have always been the suit guys. Mm -hmm. And they're just so easy to find. You know, the corn cob guy. Yeah. The, dinosaur because of his tail. Mm -hmm. This is one of my ser favorite series because I did buy so many as I was saying earlier. <laughs> you knew the you do, you've got a lot of really cool stuff in here. Mm -hmm. I mean if you look at the lumberjack has printed arms which they they didn't do a whole lot. I mean a plaid shirt with printed plaid arm. Uh, the hat is awesome. And the, a beaver the axe it. was new. The printed axe mm -hmm. was new to him. It's Bucky's. And I think that axe is still exclusive to him that specific color scheme. Yes. The hat I was using for our ashes for pe for Pokemon. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Ash Ketchum. Uh, so that looked like his hat. I can't believe they did a gangster. <laughs> oh, the yeah. uh, torso we used to use for Daryl Dixon from The Walking Dead. Oh. We, we took his uh, arms off and gave him uh, yellow arms. Do you guys know the fate of this guy, unless I'm mistaken, in the Monster series? He does turn he, into he a turns werewolf. He turns into a werewolf. 14. It's the same guy. And you can tell because it, it's the same. Not just that, uh, but the name tag the, on the The name tag, it's all ripped same. out. That yeah, it's cool. him. Same thing like the poor skater boy yeah, turns into a zombie. I never knew that. He turns that into a werewolf. So cool. Yeah, I love that. And it works because Some, in those yeah. old uh, movies, mm -hmm. it's usually the guy in the flannel shirt that turns mm -hmm. into the werewolf. I remember when I was finding the series that this guy was one of the easiest to find mm -hmm. the gladiator just because of his huge helmet he's awesome that was so easy to feel you didn't even have to like feel him up you could just look for the bag with the biggest bulge and it was that one right now the best selling figure from this series is, is the graduate he's really hard to keep in stock i'm surprised we have one it's because we just restocked our series yeah that's our only one everybody come this time of year you know spring wants mm. a graduate for their kid another one is the uh british guard here because mm -hmm. that hat is still unique to him. That one... He looks very military. That yeah. one surprised me with its price because I never expected it to go up. Also, that gun in that color, is that's the only way you can yeah. get it. It's only on yeah. that one really? thing. Yeah. It's yeah. always gray? It's always been gray or light gray. Or yeah. dark bluish gray. That's I did not it. know that. That's one of the things that makes these guys collectible and expensive is that just came with them. Like her, that club is dark gray, dark brown only mm -hmm. came with her. That specific monkey only came with her. Yeah, they they that have is, other monkeys that look like it, but not Just slightly exactly color like different. It. This is yeah. the first series that had a new animal. Right yes. for mm -hmm. the series, Sherlock Holmes is awesome. Of mm -hmm. course, we use that uh, hat for our Detective Pikachu <laughs> minifigure. Yeah. Um, it's quite fitting. And then, have you ever used this magnifying glass outside in the sun and burn stuff? I know it, it works. It works. It's Kid, an actual wooden magnifying glass. Don't try glass. this at home, but it works. Is gray exclusive for him? Uh, I don't think so. Oh, it's it not, might okay. be, but I don't think so. Normally, it's black. This was the first time they introduced the pie piece. Mm -hmm. I do believe. I think it was either that or a friend set. But I don't remember how old Friends is. So. And another fantasy character with our first dwarf. 
Yes. Which is another character they redid over mm-hmm. and over again. I'm surprised they haven't done a female graduate. They'll probably do it eventually. I yeah, guess Lego, you better right. get on yeah. it. They, they really should do a female graduate because, the, I was going to say, you could use a female face, but you don't have the hair. But if they did a female graduate, it would have to have the hair built into it. Yeah. Which they are capable of doing. Now. But then what color hair? You know, if they do a brunette or black, then you're, you're yeah. you know, or blonde, you know, you're kind of limiting yourself. They could color the tassel, too. <laughs> like with the uh, the doc, uh, the nurse from Series 1 on the graduation mm-hmm. plate, the uh, name on it is the designer. They call them, like, detective, right? Like, they never yes. use the mm-hmm. actual names because they oh, got to yeah. get around the licenses. Yeah. Can't be sued. Yeah. Is this our first uh, literary character or specific? character in the CMF? Or could we consider some of those others well, like... I don't know if he was specifically Sherlock Holmes. I mean, all detectives... I mean, wasn't Sherlock like... younger? <laughs> <laughs> all the detectives are <laughs> Yes. He wasn't like... I think this is just a generic detective, which you could label as Sherlock Holmes, but it, it was up to the imagination of the person playing with it. Mm-hmm. So. They did start doing that more often, though, it seems like. Yeah. Well, I guess that could be Dark Tan, and I... You know, that could be the Lon Chaney wolf band. I mean, I guess you could yeah. read into it any way you want. The genericness of it is the beauty of it, because you can make it whatever yes. you want. I think they learned from Series 5, they made too many of them. Like I was saying, you could find them oh, everywhere. Yes. They had a, a plethora of them left over when they went to put them on clearance. So because of that, they did not make as many Series 6, I think. I was never able to find these in excess, which makes them a little more expensive. I remember finding them in the most obscure places, like a party city, and then when I was up in Iowa to see Cousins one year, and I got ones that I specifically wanted, like the robot. He was my favorite. Him and Sleepyhead when I was a kid. But now that I look back on it, I wish I got more Romans. That guy is amazing, especially mm. with his specific shield that's never been made again. He got another space, so there's another gender swap. She was the first pink space person, mm. and it, that was a very popular one. She's always been very popular because of that, that genie. Yes. And that gem that's on his head there. And um, the is that the, the smoke? Torso, lower torso, the legs. Is that new for him? It was a new piece, yeah. Mm. Uh, they've done it a few more times for new genies. Um, mm-hmm. And it actually has a specific way it's supposed to go because on the back, they had to make sure that it could hold or stand on a stud, so they had to make it like a weird circular part. So it looks best from one side, which is the intention of it. Oh, okay. So I see. That is a cool piece. This has got to be my fate. Well, the Roman, of course, but also the Statue of Liberty is mm-hmm. just so iconic. The Minotaur was another fan favorite for uh, people. That was mine. I was going to say that. Mm-hmm. Fa- and I actually like the surgeon was... or anesthesiologist, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Eh, we'll, we'll call she it has surgeon. a needle. I, think, I guess they didn't want to give her a scalpel. I think the entry is surgeon. I'm pretty sure. And your classic UFO. The gray. Alien. Yeah. Because he's, when you, you know, over time, the Roswell incident i think this is what they were depicted to look like yes and you have the the bandit another historical probably the first teddy bear we we yeah the Mm -hmm. teddy bear first uh meat piece actually and only right they've never done that or has that appeared in city sets uh i'm trying to think i don't the first cleaver think so but the cleavers definitely returned i know we've got several more but is there a occupation that they haven't done that you really want to see besides atlanta brick co-owner yeah that's (laughs) <laughs> That's what I was going to say. See, I think they should do Atlanta Brickco employee. <laughs> okay. We have more of those. We, yeah. Mm. Uh, they haven't done a Lego store employee. Oh, really? an actual, like, branded Lego. Yeah, oh. they've, they've made them before in other but things. But not in a CMF. But not in a CMF thing. In fact, occupational things, people really want their occupations. Yeah. Make it, just coming out with a whole series of occupational guys might be mm-hmm. pretty cool. Because barista's easy to get. Mm-hmm. They've made most in city sets, which they might be, like, restraining or, like, restricting just for city sets mm. specifically but they have done a few but i think it's just ones that they plan don't plan on like doing the actual city sets for got it because they're so obscure that's a, it's a good question justin i think i would have to think about that. all right as we go along yeah. maybe we'll discover some speaking of odd occupations you have the stuntman yeah that was good though that's a really daredevil that gave him a beautiful uh that, that's a handlebar mustache that hair they used on the mechanic before that it was mm-hmm. the same hair piece but that yeah. i think that was the first time they came out with that hair piece and is this our first new night I'm or did they do believe, another night? No, that was the first uh, CMF night. So he is a Warthog Knight, which never existed before mm-hmm. in no. Castle or Kingdom. 
Which is or odd born. because now they normally do an ode to yeah. previous existing knights that Lego's made. So there are a lot of people that just collect every classic looking or neoclassic spaceman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It seems like they would hide one of those in every other, like oh, an yeah. odd color. Just a bizarre mm -hmm. color they've never done and will never do again in a CMF. Like seems like that would, yeah. Well, they, they more or less do with the space figures. With space, but I'm talking like a total classic with the, mm -hmm. the, the air tank and the helmet but and the visor and that's it. it. Down. I mean, they do, they come out with a new series every three months. That's, you're talking about so many. But and not, it's not just with the CMF series, now they do like... Yeah, the license, license, one, license. Yeah. So they do a unlicensed one every year now, right? Or they're two. Um, I think it's two now. Two in a year of unlicensed, and then it's normally okay. one or two. Yeah, I think it's two, and then two licensed. Okay, so I think it's four a year now, somewhere around there. The uh, Space Marine here was amazing. Yes, I mean, he, and he still is. I mean, that is a great, great figure. You got the space logo, the heavy suit of armor, and then later on they came out with the figure too, and, he, and cool prints too. Mm -hmm. um, he's a definitely great army builder. If you ever play Warhammer uh, 40k or see Warhammer 40k, he kind of reminds aliens. you of something like that. The one that I was after the most, and I think most people wore, was the third costume, the bunny suit guy. Mm -hmm. He was very... Was, was he the one we were talking about that has, they remade him and they changed the uh, stud on his they, head? No, that was the chicken, the chicken suit guy. Chicken chicken series guy nine. Right. We'll get to him eventually. Yeah. But they did remake him in a sense because they put on the bunny headpiece. Yeah. And But then they printed out a new torso with like a, a blue vest for mm. uh, Easter a few years ago. And then they also did the bunny headpiece in, uh, I believe it was brown for one of the DC villains in the Lego Batman movie. Mm. And then I think they did it in lime or like a light blue in the build of it. Is she our first, uh, I'm pointing to the, uh, Female the, warrior? the, I guess, opera singer is what I call her. Uh, because is she the first one that has the dual-sided face in the CMF? I don't think so. I think okay. they've done a few dual-sided prior to. But yeah, that actually, is the good boxers question. are dual-sided. Oh, that's right, because he had the yeah. black eye. Yeah, beautiful <laughs> that's right. black eye. I love when they do two-sided faces that make sense. It's not just a different expression. It's... It tells the story like her. Hers is singing. She's belting out the high note. Where did you get that? I never in my life have thought of her as an opera singer. Why would an opera singer she's carry a, a sword? Warrior. Warrior. She's, she's a fighter. She kills people. If someone says she's doing bad, she's going to go slice She pillages something? villages. She's a Viking. Look, oh, she's okay. got horns on her helmet. Oh, that, that is true. Why would she? That she is has true. a sword for crying out She probably doesn't even have a singing the, voice. The, it's <laughs> raspy from yelling and screaming and fighting. All, all the blood she swallows by yeah. accident. <laughs> it's a wonder th wonderful thing about Lego, though. I mean, if you want to make her an opera singer, but all right. Opera singer. Even though she's dressed classically <laughs> like Helga. Okay. I think this is one of the first times they did the, uh, or no, not besides the cape girl, but they had like three regenderings of previous characters. Like they had a female t female tennis player in series three, and then they got the male one, male rock star. Now they have the female one. They had the male Viking. Now they have the female Viking. Um, so, so do you think this is the first time we're kind of feeling that they're running out of ideas? Um, no, no, okay. no, no. They're being fair, I think. You know? Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's girls are really into Lego too, mm -hmm. and they want a, and they want, and they surf and they skateboard, and they want their own themselves yeah. as a skater or a surfer. You know, the Olympic diver was awesome because it first had time, the, yeah, the new hat and the medal. The medal was pretty big. Yeah, was... and then they did the Great Britain figures that had the medals too. <sighs> so crazy. They're, and they're, <laughs> they were so hard to get. Uh, well, weren't they only sold in Great Britain? Yeah, during mm -hmm. the Olympics. Just like the uh, the German soccer players mm -hmm. during the uh, World Which Cup. Which we have some of those. We'll bust yeah. those out. But the bagpiper, I mean, he's killer. Oh, he's yeah. so popular. Uh, he's so popular. Neptune. His um, headpiece was very, very big. This yeah. was a great series. Definitely Little Red list. Riding Hood and other stories. The Honestly, Aztec, there. dude, that with the awesome he, yeah. headpiece. You don't see too many Aztec mocks. Mm -hmm. But uh, they did just come out with more stuff. They did the uh, Jaguar Warrior. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then uh, some of the Ninjago sets have... Uh, they the did do sets. like yeah an island warrior one in the newest mm -hmm. yeah. season. Mm -hmm. 
which is very nice because the king of that one has a really cool yes, helmet. Yes, yeah. Custom mold. I also think the next series is one this of is the your best favorite. series. Okay, let's look at it. Let's bust it out. This is series number eight. Series seven was another one that they didn't make a whole lot of. We didn't see too many of those. I remember finding them the most, honestly. Oh, really? Like, whenever I went to Walmart, they had a ton. Can I help? And I would just feel up. We actually had people come up to us and like, hey, can you find us this one really fast? So we would feel up for him and give it to him. And just like, yeah, How much do we charge for that? Uh, for molesting packages? $300. $300 for a molesting. That or just keep us out of the FBI's radar. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's carpal tunnel, right? I mean, uh, yeah. you're giving yourself carpal tunnel. Ever so slightly. This was so cool that they put an alien conquest style oh. figure in with a serious figure. I know we have and She's dive. so unique, too. With the diver, the, the glass piece is actually a magnifying glass piece so it zooms oh, in on his face really? yeah oh, i didn't realize that you know but that helmet we have uh we've gotten in bulk before because oh, they goodness, threw it yeah. in with build a figure yeah. at lego stores which is good i mean it's a cool unique piece mm -hmm. kind of waters it down it didn't have a uh, costume suit person surprisingly but yet it had so many other good ones like mm -hmm. the pretzel guy the conquistador the evil robot the dj uh even a santa claus and like the thespian, the a pirate, and that's the gold sword. I think it only came with him, or like maybe one other. I would say she character. always was the most sought after figure. Yes. Um, I think her price reflects that. Mm -hmm. She's the most expensive. This was the now. first time they made a football player, I believe, as yeah. well. This looked just like, I think, uh, Peyton Manning's number, too. Really? He was, he was playing for the Colts at the time. It's, it's a lot so of people's very actually. similar to um, the <laughs> but, Colts uniform. So, he's a, he's a cheerleader player. with an A, Alabama. Alabama. You. Okay. Red. Well, she's red. You know, Crimson Tide. Okay. Get so many haters. <laughs> uh, and this is just a British businessman. Is that just a he... businessman? Yeah. Yeah. It was very generic. I think he had a newspaper, but I don't see him on there. But he had the briefcase with him. Mm -hmm. He, I never thought would be expensive. Actually, I, some of these I never thought would be expensive, but most all of them have appreciated in price by a decent amount. And um, it is just because they're unique. Yeah. yeah. You know. It was the first one without a costume, which maybe pe that deterred people from buying them because they wanted the costume, so there wasn't as many out kind of thing. I still think it's one of the best series to come out. Like, there's better Santa Claus out there because this one doesn't have the printed bag, mm -hmm. but the new ones that they're putting out have printed bags. I think that one might have an exclusive head, maybe? Because I remember Probably. it had something exclusive to it. Okay. Um, but that was just an easy way for someone to get Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. uh, I like this guy because... You got these in Monster Fighters mm -hmm. in brown, yes, and also Man Bat in uh, Batman, but <laughs> yeah. they're only in black here. And now they have a Man Bat in white, so now they have three different colors. They do. Yeah. They have a Man Bat in white. These uh, feathers are pretty rare and hard to find. They other people came with them. And is it this Shakespeare, the one from the Lego Movie? Um, I think it it's the Shakespeare one. from the Lego Movie He's, series one. They gave him one as a pen. Yes, and it was white as well. Mm -hmm. But that was an actual Shakespeare figure. This is just a thespian. And then himself. if you notice, he has, John, that's a mistake. He has one in his hair. In you got to get on these employees. Oh, yeah. that's the wrong feather. Mm. We'll have to Shame. fix that. See? We'll just hide him back. Experts. Did I tell you that? I told you that, right? I think this is the first time that this this headphone piece around the hair was yep. made as well, which you'll see a lot more. In a and then there was also the regendering of uh, the, the skier as well. The skier, yep. But she was called a downhill skier. Not just a skier. And a bad robot. You know why oh, I like the mech suit guy from Series 9? Because he doesn't have any accessories to lose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's very simple, plus he is so cool. You can do a lot with that. He's got a cool print, he's got a cool printed head, the helmet. I mean, They've never used that helmet again? They've used it, but not in that print. Okay. I would say this is definitely one of the most popular series just because of how little we have, because normally we have a good bit of everything, but mm -hmm. in Series 9 we have most none of, especially, I'm surprised we have the mermaid right now, actually, because... She is one of the most popular. I had to make people. her. We, did, we were missing the hair. Oh, I had to go job. searching. For we the we hair. had none until this man yeah. came and made one. We have a waiter. There you go with that bottle of wine, mm -hmm. which or grape juice, which only came with him. Yes, that's, that's pretty print. awesome. And yeah, no, that that the tray piece was new to him, but it's been made a few times before. I believe in multiple city sets as well. Is this the same gold that we got for the original? That is from the same one as the Karate Guy. It's no recolor, okay. um, but it is a recolor of the club for the mm -hmm. Cyclops. Um, the uh, the plunger guy, the plumber, he was one of my favorites just because of that new plunger piece yeah. that came out. And it was and so they... funny because it would actually stick to stuff as well. And we finally found out Lego people do number two. We didn't know that. What are they that. eating? <laughs> Bricks. Yeah. <laughs> 
This was an example of a figure that was almost identically re-released. So it made the exclusivity of this series, of him at least, a little less. But Cut you his said, price down by t two times. You said <laughs> he is not absolutely 100% identical because this one has the hole in the stud. And you said the re-release... Does not. Now he's going to open up. Yeah. It, oh, he's actually going to open it up. The, he's doing it. The re-release actually did cause the price of that one to fall, though. He used to be $40. 40, 40 bucks, yeah. Right? And now he's down to 20 People at shows would always ask me, what's the difference between this $40 chicken and the $12 chicken? It took a while for us to find out. Actually, this chicken used to be $10. And uh, my daughter knew, and she was, you know, this cute little blonde-haired girl. She was, at the time, she might have been, like, seven years old, mm -hmm. and she she would get the figures and she would show them the difference in the stud. That's a blocked mm -hmm. stud and that's an open stud. It's the only difference. It's the same print and everything. But if you look at the stud on top, that one's open so you can breathe through it. This one's blocked so you're going to choke on it and die. So she would show that to people. And people would love that so much that this little girl just targeted yeah. yeah. them on them that they tipped her. <laughs> really? She really? Tips all the time. She was making was... more money than you. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh, wow. This is also the first time tips. they did like a new printed arm piece uh, for a minifigure instead of just the normal arm and it was actually just a piece that you could pop off and it would just go straight on it mm -hmm. which is good for clouds but <laughs> oh i didn't think of that yeah i even like this police officer even though lego has tons and tons of police officers this one's different it's more realistic yeah mm -hmm. uh it's just a different style this is the police academy style police officer yes you could definitely use that for a cop in new york uh, definitely yeah. uh, an exclusive one to it mm -hmm. um the judge was a fun one because it was the first time you ever got a gavel the only time right they never redid his yeah, gavel actually, or yeah, his hair right we actually had somebody that worked for judges or something like that and she wanted gavels Judy? made for the judges and she wanted their minifigures made and he was out and she was like why can't you just give me one of those for all these judges and i was like because it only came with this figure and it's really hard to get mm -hmm. you you couldn't even buy it in bulk at the time so we had to make gavels out of pieces mm -hmm. yeah. even though like a made a gavel they never yeah. made why didn't you just buy a bunch of him didn't have them uh, couldn't get them i love the jekyll and hyde with the he instead of giving him t a two-sided head they just split it down the middle he got That's stuck in right. transformation he's the first two-face that's right. The knight was a nice one, too, for uh, army building purposes. Plus, it also came with a new sword mold. It was very slight different, but it had, like, indentions in the handle and everything. Really? That's a unique sword to him? So this, it might have come in a few other things, but for the most part, yeah. There's another reason, again, why I don't like all the accessories, is even this roller derby girl. See, her skates are there. Somebody bought her and didn't get her skates. Uh-oh. <laughs> Those skates. Off? The skates that are easy. You come back and get your skates. Yeah. Oh, uh, we're finally halfway there. There he is. This is the first minifig I ever got. This guy. No, oh, I forgot the she skates. Did fall. Oh, this was a good one with his tattoo. Yeah. That was so awesome. And I honestly a, hated that figure. Yeah. <laughs> he is a character that has appeared multiple times in Ninjago as just an extra. Really? A biker guy. And yeah. so has he. So has the, um, the, captain. the captain. He is in the show. I believe he's in series four. Season five? Stackers, right? Stackers. Yes, yeah. stackers, and then For I the looked baseball. it up, it's the clutchers. Clutchers, yeah. okay. Oh, okay. So what's the A? Why does she have an A, the cheerleader? <laughs> no! Oh, I don't want to hear that. Yeah, you want them to come up with an uh, E or something for Georgia? Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow, you're not trying to hit anything at all, no. Uh, uh, sorry. I so this is a really neat story why this says oranges or and peaches. Do you know why that is? <laughs> that is a pun on a famous book, right? Uh, origin of Species or something like that? Oh. Origin of Species. Yeah. That's so people, c people, their professors tell them they have to go to the library and Origins get Origins of species. species, and they they Origins get it wrong, and, and they they ask a librarian, "I need oranges and peaches," and <laughs> apparently it's an inside librarian joke. <laughs> really? Okay. <laughs> and a librarian explained to me. Uh, but that. Oh, that's okay. at a Lego convention. Yeah, I never knew that. Her mug, actually. coffee mug, says shh. Yeah. Well, she it. is a librarian, so they got that right. They did really good with that. That is awesome. This one, yeah. this season came out with a lot of 
like, I think two new animal molds for the Chihuahua mm. and the Seagull, which was always nice. People love it when Lego makes mm -hmm. new animal molds. Yeah, you got a young George Washington here, Actually, possibly. I believe or, it's just uh, Revolutionary Warrior. Fayette, could be Lafayette. The costume, the bee costume, which mm -hmm. is, I believe, the most expensive costume one from any series right now. Really? At 45. Why? I don't know why it was that one specifically, but I think it's just from people hoarding up Series 10 for the elusive Mr. Gold. Oh, um, so this is Mr. Gold. Yeah. Oh, okay. So here's here's one of the reasons I think this series went up in value really quick. They it really did. It seemed mm -hmm. to go up yeah. faster than other series because people were buying them for the boxes and the packs for Mr. Gold, and they were opening. So we were we went up to New York Comic Con in mm -hmm. 2013. I think this came out, or 2014, and I was buying boxes of these at Five Below. And we were just we were sitting around our hotel room in New York City, opening up these packs so we could sell them at the convention the next day. We mm -hmm. weren't really looking for Mr. Gold. We just, that's what we did. The family mm -hmm. just bought boxes and opened up all the packs every time they came out with new series. All these were pretty cheap at the time because no one. Uh, Two ninety nine. People didn't 99? care about the bee. They didn't care about the, you know, Medusa. So they were, they kind of came and went quickly because Mr. Gold got all the attention. Yeah. Mm. And then people were like, wait, wait, there's a bee character? There's a Medusa? Medusa? There's Grandpa? Uh, the Librarian? They all, oh, this was a very, very popular series after it was discontinued. Yeah. Which is why some of them specifically have gone up quite a good mm -hmm. bit. Now, do either of you have a Mr. Gold? No. Or, I have actually never seen a Mr. Gold in the flesh. Really? I've seen a lot. In the plastic. I've, I've actually, maybe I've seen five, and people will say, hey, do you guys have a Mr. Gold at a Lego convention? And I'm like, no, we don't. And he's like, I do. You want to see it? It's, Whoa, dude, you're carrying that around in your pocket. That's like $3,000. And then one time at uh, Brick Fiesta in uh, Dallas, Texas, we were, we had our booth set up and a guy had Mr. Gold and he said, Hey, I really don't want to sell it, but if I can get a lot of money for it, I'll sell it. Do you want to try to sell it for me? So we had it in our booth and everybody was like, Ooh, ah, you know, uh, but he wanted $1,200 for it. And I was like, you're never going to sell it for $1,200. Well, now it's actually gone up. It's like 1500 now. No, it's 3000 3000 like That, that, that 3, doesn't 000. surprise me. I mean, it's gone up. It keeps going up a lot. What are your guys' opinions on having a super exclusive figure in a CMF blind bag series? I love it, and I can't believe they haven't done it again. I'm okay. thinking it'll be redone for the 25th season. Okay. So for the 20th anniversary, 25 season anniversary, or series anniversary, I should say. Uh, they'll do another gold figure. Cause, cause, Probably a Mrs. Gold to go along with Mr. Gold. You think it would be Mrs. Gold, not a um, Mr. Silver or Mr. Platinum or something? If they do a Mr. Silver, that'd be pretty cool. But I think they'll do a Mrs. Gold. Okay. Uh, I think that'll be the... But it doesn't their... have to be a shiny figure. It could just be a hard-to-get figure. Yeah. It could be um, uh, the, cre the old Kirk Christensen, the founder of Lego. Yeah. You know? Okay. I mean, well, wouldn't that be neat? Now, a lot of adult collectors hate that because they want the Mr. Gold. They want to complete. They're completionists. Yes. And they, you make one figure... Absolutely impossible. Well, it's not impossible for most. Well, they they didn't actually number them, so you know they came out with sixteen figures, and here's a picture of all sixteen figures. Mr. Gold did not. He, he was, was not counting the, as part of sixteen. There was figures. a certain amount made of Mr. Gold. I believe yes. it was five thousand, mm -hmm. and there's still about worldwide a right? thousand that have not been found. Because mm -hmm. when you got Mr. Gold, there was a little code thing that you'd put it on Lego.com, and it would show where he, people have found mm -hmm. them, etc. Uh, how many have been found, how many are still left. And that's mostly due, the ones that are left, due to people keeping sealed boxes and sealed packs and selling them sealed. Because a sealed box of Series 10 is like 600 to to $1,000 now. So it's crazy price because you can buy it and hope to get Mr. Gold, but if you don't, like the amount of figures that you get will still be probably around what you paid. So it's not mm -hmm. really worth people's while to do it. But, you know, if you want Mr. Gold, there's still some out there. I think a lot of people didn't register it, too. They just, yeah, they were so excited they got it, they didn't, they threw the thing away mm -hmm. and never registered. So I think that number is lower. Maybe it's than like 2,000. Maybe 2,000. Um, Man, we talked a lot about minifigures. We talked so much that we're going to have to split this vodcast into two. So look for Lego Minifig CMF Part 2 next week. Don't forget to comment, share, like, and subscribe, and we will see you guys very, very soon.